Hi everyone and welcome to the Whimsy Stamp channel. I'm Donna from Creative Pixie Designs and today I'll be featuring the braided clear stamp set from the July 10 mini release on my project. We're jumping right into the stamping and I am stamping the image onto a piece of solar white cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I will be doing some Copic coloring. I do go ahead and stamp this image out a couple of times just to make sure I have a good, clean, crisp image. Before I get into the coloring, I'm just going to walk you through the process of how I approach coloring something like this. And sorry about my high-tech pointing device there, but anything that is at the top of the head because we can see the image that is curving away is going to be darker in those areas. As it comes down the head and bumps up, the light would hit that area so it would be a little bit lighter. And then as we come down to where the hair gathers in that ponytail, again this would be a little bit more darker, not only because it's recessed back, but also because the gathering of the hair would create a lot of shading of the strands sitting one on top of another. With this image, I'm just taking one section at a time so that it doesn't become overwhelming and I'll break it down kind of as I go along. I'm starting with these three sections which are drawn as if they are further back and anything that is sitting further back would be darker especially at the points where the strands look like they're sitting on top of it. I have my darkest color and I'm just tracing along the lines where the stamped outline is. This gives you a guide where the shadows are and all I'm doing is creating my cast shadows of the hair sections from above reflected below. I'm coming in with an RV09 to blend out what I had just added, but I'm extending it out just a little bit further into the white space. I'll continue adding each lighter shade over what I had just added and extending it just a little bit further until I can finish off with an RV02 as my highlight shade. For the rest of the top of her head, it's essentially colored the same as those three little sections we just did. So with the top of the section and at the base of her ponytail would be darker. So I'm adding in my darkest shade to those areas. I'm adding in the color and the different length so some of the flicks will be longer than others. And I'm also leaving spaces in between those flicks so that I can come in with lighter shades to create some depth. I have my next shade which is RV09 and again I'm just adding that in a little more of the flicks and going over what I've previously added. And then I can add in the rest of the markers to finish coloring this portion of the image. I did leave a large section for the highlight which I'm using in or I'm using RV02 and I'm just flicking that color in blending out any harsh lines that I may have. So to keep this video at somewhat of a normal viewing time, I've done a little more coloring off screen. Again, I'm breaking down this entire bottom half into sections and I go section by section so that it doesn't become overwhelming when I color something like this. Here I'm sharing with you the coloring of this very top section. And being that it is the top section, it won't have any cast shadows, so my darkest color will be minimal at this point. 
I've added in a couple of flicks where the artist has drawn in the strands. And then I come in with the next colors, add, adding in just a couple of more flicks and blending out what I've previously added. I will have some close-up images as well as the color combinations over on my blog, which I have linked down below in case you're interested in checking that out. And finally, I colored in the background with several Copic markers in blue. I've gone over the area multiple times and blended everything out as smoothly as I possibly can. And then I used a square die to die cut my image so that I can add in my sentiment. I'm definitely using my stamping tool so that after all that work, I don't mess this part up. But once I have this stamped aligned in my MISTI, I treated the panel with some anti-static powder. And then using VersaFine ink, I'm stamping the sentiment down onto that panel. I do go ahead and stamp it out a couple of times and then heat set the sentiment with black embossing powder. I'm creating the background with the beaded curtain stencil. This is a basic and quick technique for using stencils to create texture on an ink blended background with glitter paste. But first I need to create my ink blended panel. I have a piece of smooth white cardstock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm applying sponge sugar distress oxide with my blender brush across the entire panel. Then I'll add the background on my workstation with the stencil secured in place on top. Next, I have my glimmer paste that I'm stirring up a little bit with my palette knife. And then I'll go in with glitter paste across the entire panel. I'm applying the glitter paste as evenly as possible using my palette knife. And then I can just return the axis back into the container for the next time. With glitter paste, you do want to clean off your stencil right away. Once it dries, it won't come off. So sometimes I'll just have a container of soapy water next to me when I, where I can put my stencil until I have a few more minutes to properly wash it off with soapy water. So here's my very glitzy and glamorous background all dry. I probably jumped in the pool with my kids for an hour or so and let this panel air dry. With my focal image, I'm going for a Polaroid picture look. So if you remember these back in the day, almost everyone had one of these back in like the 70s and 80s. And when the picture came out, it had this white border around it, with the bottom being slightly bigger than the other three sides. So that is kind of the look I'm going for. And honestly, I should have glued this flat to the white card panel to make it look more like one piece. But it's fine in the end. In the end, it does look like what I intended it. I'll finish off the card by adhering the entire Polaroid picture panel to the background that I created using foam adhesive to pop it up for a little dimension. That will finish off my card for today. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to be notified the next time Whimsy Stamps uploads a new video. Thanks so much for spending a little time with me today and I'll see you another time.